order. The clerk will now read the order of the day. Item 1, the Committee of Supply to consider the estimates for the financial year 1st April 2018 to 31st March 2019. Head S, Ministry of, Ministry of Manpower, Mr. Patrick Tay. Mr. Chair, I beg to move that the total sum to be allocated for Head S of the estimates be reduced by $100. The workforce profile in Singapore is changing rapidly. Today, 54% of our resident workforce are professionals, managers, executives and technicians, PMETs for short, and 34% are PMEs. There have been many PMEs approaching the labour movement for help by our various workplace advisory platforms with a variety of issues from unfair dismissals to breaches of provisions in the Employment Act. However, PMEs with a monthly basic salary of more than 4,005 are not covered under the Act. Since April 2017, we have the new Employment Claims Tribunal, as well as the Tripartite Alliance for Disputes Management to assist PMEs to a speedy resolution of their disputes. The Employment Claims Tribunal, which came to force on 1st April 2017, has already done away with a salary cap for salary-related claims by employees, but the ECT is limited to salary-related claims, both contractually and statutorily. The median gross monthly salaries of workers stand at 4,056 in 2016. For professional managers, executives and technicians, the gross money salaries P50, 50th percentile, for residents stand at 5,910 as at June 2016. Our labour movement have also been challenged with difficult questions concerning various parts of the Employment Act the past few years, as it also affects our unions and union members amidst a backdrop of higher number of layoffs in 2016 unfair dismissals, mergers, acquisitions, outsourcing, volatility and interesting new vehicles involving the sale and transfer of companies and staff. Based on cases our labour movement has encountered the past few years, a changing workforce profile, upward movements of median wages, as well as a stronger impetus to ensure our employment laws stay relevant, I hope to see three things. First, expansion of the scope of the Employment Act to cover PMEs beyond the current 4,500 limit. Second, extension of the Part 4 protection to cover non-workmen beyond the current $2,500 limit. And third, enhancements to the existing dispute resolution framework. First, expansion. Despite the last round of Employment Act amendments in April 2014, we have still been receiving feedback queries from PMEs through various channels such as through our unions, union leaders, TADAM, my Meet the People sessions, our UPME centres, our NTUC Law Works, legal clinics, as well as through my social media platforms, such as LinkedIn, Facebook, from aggrieved PMEs who were unable to assist as they earn more than $4,500 per month. Despite the amendments to the Industrial Relations Act in April 2015, to allow for collective representation of PMEs by all unions, in some of our unionised companies, management have occasionally attempted to use the $4,500 limit in the EA as a proxy to suggest that the union cannot expand its scope of representation beyond those earning more than this sum. Fortunately, such cases are not aplenty. Revising median wages, including that of PMEs, and PMEs gradually forming the majority of the workforce, there is a need to review the $4,500 cap to ensure that the EA serves the majority of the working population. While the intent of the cap is to strike a balance between the rights of the employees and to allow companies to manage their labour obligations and costs, the changing profile of our workforce requires a regularly, regular review of the scope of the coverage of the Employment Act to ensure that these policy tensions are adequately balanced. In fact, whether there is an, in fact a need to have this PME versus rank and file dichotomy is something we need to review, whether now or in the near future. I submit, therefore, we should remove this $4,500 salary cap completely so that all employees in Singapore can enjoy the basic protection under the Employment Act. Second, extension. Part 4 of the EA is important as it involves the hours of work 
and determines the scope of those who are entitled to overtime payments. The two current categories of workers entitled to overtime payments are, first, employees who are not a workman, but who is covered by the Employment Act and earns a monthly basic salary of not more than $2,500, and two, a workman earning a basic monthly salary of not more than $4,500. To keep pace with wage movements, I submit there's a need to review both the $2,500 and $4,500 limits accordingly and raise it to keep pace with rising median wages. Moving ahead, I also see a need to address whether the dichotomy between workmen and non-workmen is still tenable and also whether it is also appropriate to consider extending the scope of Part 4 to PMEs. This may well be needed as the dichotomy between rank and file and PME workers becomes increasingly blurred but it will require a closer and deeper examination as it will have a significant impact to both workers and employers. Third, enhancements. As shared earlier, PMEs earning above 4,005 are not protected by provisions in the EA such as Section 14 or wrongful or unfair dismissals. By the same token, the ECT does not have jurisdiction to hear wrongful, unfair dismissal cases under the EA. Currently, union members in unionized companies can file a case to the Manpower Minister for such unfair, wrongful dismissal cases. However, as we see more cases of workers, especially PMEs, facing such unfair, wrongful dismissals, it is also imperative that the Employment Claims Act be reviewed and the ECT's jurisdiction be expanded to cover unfair, wrongful dismissal cases over and above the current salary-related claims. Another area for enhancement and greater clarity would be the very technical and highly moot provision of Section 18A of the EA. In it, the employer has the right to transfer an employee to another employer if the organisation is being restructured. Section 18A allows for the transfer of employees to a new entity. I suggest we should consider amending Section 18A to provide greater clarity. The other alternative would be to issue tripartite guidelines or an explicit articulation on what transfers or transactions fall within or outside of Section 18A. This is one area that's been constantly tested and challenged and greater clarity will be a boon for unions, employers, as well as legal counsels. Chairman, in Chinese. 有许多专业人士竞力和执行人员简称BMEs向我们求助 BMEs也不例外。BMEs在劳动队伍中所占的比例也逐年增加。为了应付未来劳动力、工作和职场的需求，我建议从三大方面检讨雇佣法。第一，取消雇佣法的薪金顶线，让所有工友，包括月薪超